All right, hello. Welcome back, everybody. We are continuing through Chapter 6 uh, in our AP Statistics Modeling the World curriculum. Uh, again, we are looking at uh, Z-scores and uh, the normal model. And we'll be introducing those things here uh, after this next video, actually. So, um, in this video, we're looking at shifting data. Um, so there's two ways that we can shift data, either through addition, subtraction, or through multiplication, division. And the idea being here is that if we have a distribution, um, say something that is unimodal and symmetric, we can take this entire distribution and every single piece of data that is inside this distribution, and we can add um, a certain constant uh, to every single piece of data. And so what happens if we add every single, or uh, excuse me, add a constant amount to every single piece of data? And as it turns out, uh, when we add or subtract a constant amount, um, that same constant is either added or subtracted from the mean. So if we were to add an amount, we would simply be taking that distribution and shifting it to the uh, to the right if we're adding a constant. Um, conversely, if we are subtracting a constant, we're going to go the other direction. But notice how that when we do this, uh, everything in this distribution is moving the same amount. So our measures of position are changing, right? Like median, uh, Q1, Q3, min, max, all of these things. Our measures of position have changed, but notice that our measures of spread have not changed, right? So adding a constant to every value adds the same constant to measures of center and percentiles, but leaves measures of spread unchanged. Because we can see that simply adding the same amount isn't going to change the overall spread of the data. It's remaining the same. Therefore, measures of spread like standard deviation um, or the range or the interquartile range, all of these things are remaining unchanged because we are simply uh, shifting the data to the left and to the right. Um, we've got a picture of that uh, with some data here. So this is uh, men's actual weights uh, from pounds to kilograms. Okay, so um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, from uh, excuse me, actual weights to above recommended weights. So here we have uh, their actual weights. We can see that we've got this kind of distribution that is unimodal and skewed to the right. Um, notice my box plot here has a few outliers. Uh, you can kind of see that skew um, through this here. And that after we have shifted the data to the right, or excuse me, to the left, it looks the same. This data uh, looks approximately the same as the data uh, before, only it's just been shifted in a single direction. Um, and that's because, again, it's changing all of my measures of position, but not changing my measures of spread. Uh, these two distributions look basically the same, aside from where their center is at, right? This one's centered around, uh, looks like 75. This one looks like it's uh, around uh, zero, right? Ish, because that's negative 20, right? Right? So shifting data with addition subtraction um, just changes the measures of position, does not change the measure of spread. Okay? What about multiplication and division, though? Okay? When we divide or multiply all the data values by a constant value, all measures of position, like mean, median, percentiles, and the measures of spread, range, IQR, and standard deviation, are divided and multiplied by that same constant value. So let's look at a picture of that and why this suddenly changes the spread. Same data, um, but now we're rescaling it uh, by a, uh, a certain number. Notice that the image on the left here, again, is unimodal spread to the right, but after the scaling is, not n is significantly more spread out, right? And think about it this way. Um, if you had test scores, 
uh, and say like this was a test out of 50. Okay, and uh, you had 38 and 39 as two of your test scores. If we were to double those test scores so that it was out of um, 100, right? We multiply everything by two. These scores are going to go to 76 and 78. Notice the increase in the spread. These ones have a difference of one. These same scores, after being scaled by a constant of two, have a difference of two. Now take that idea and put it on a bigger scale, right? Uh, if you do every single piece of data and multiply it by two, you are taking your spread and multiplying it by two because everything that was a distance of one away is now a distance of two away, which is doubling the spread of your distribution. So standard deviations and ranges and interquartile ranges, they're going to change when you multiply but not when you add, okay? Addish, the, the moral of the story here is that uh, means are affected by addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, okay? And whatever we do to all of the data is the same thing that we're gonna do to the position. Uh, measures of spread, that would be uh, standard deviation, interquartile range, etc are only affected by multiplication and division. They are not influenced by changes in addition and subtraction. So let's do a quick example to kind of show that. Um, in 1995, the Educational Testing Service adjusted the scores of the SAT tests. Before ETS recentered the SAT verbal test, the mean of all test scores was 450, and the standard deviation is 100. If we added 50 points to each score, what would the new mean and standard deviation be? We're adding 50 points to each score. So remember, addition subtraction influences the mean only, not the standard deviation. So my new mean is going to be my original mean plus the 50 that we're adding, so that makes it 500. My standard deviation is remaining unchanged at 100 because it is not influenced by changes in addition and subtraction. All we did was we shifted the new center. The new center is at 500 instead of 450. Part B kind of adds on to that. Suppose we drew box plots of the test taker scores uh, a year before and a year after recentering. How would the box plots differ? Uh, well, they would be the same, except centered um, at 500 instead of 450. And again, this is because they are not influenced by uh, the standard deviation is not being influenced by the addition and subtraction. So the spread isn't changing. The shape isn't changing. It is simply a difference in where the center is at or where all of our measures of um, our measures of uh, position are. Okay. So part C, suppose we double each score, what would the new mean and standard deviation be? Well, if we doubled it, it would be 450 times 2, so 900 would be my mean. And my standard deviation would be 100 times 2, which is 200. Again, we're multiplying by 2 now, so measures of uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division are all influencing, um, or excuse me, are influencing the, uh, <laughs> let me try this one more time. Multiplication and division here influences both mean and standard deviation, okay? So it's influencing both, the, both mean and standard deviation in this case. Um, just as an addition to this, uh, not posted uh, on this particular slide, what if you were to double each score uh, and add 50? Uh, the mean 
would be double 450 times 2 plus 50 and you would get uh, 950 as your new mean because we doubled it and we added 50 means are influenced by all four operations but my standard deviation would be 100 times 2 and that's it we would ju that plus 50 isn't influencing the standard deviation so all we would have to do is double each score so why does this and how does this relate to z-scores this is where we'll end uh, this video today um, standardizing data into z-scores is a shifting in the data we are shifting the data by subtracting the mean and then we're rescaling the data by dividing by the standard deviation uh, take a distribution if we calculated z-scores for every single piece of data so let's say that this one was centered at 10 and had a standard deviation of uh, 5 so this would be 15 20 25 right these are three standard deviations above the mean if we were to recenter this um, using our z-scores all we're doing is taking uh, we're recentering it so that the mean is uh, I'm gonna come down here we're recentering it and changing the center to the mean of zero that's what subtracting the mean does and then we're dividing by the standard deviation which changes the spread to have a standard deviation of one so this model that we had here is going to get uh, rescaled to something like this, where the new center is at zero and the new standard deviation is one. So notice that we've taken this, this big spread out distribution here, we've centered it differently over zero, and we've changed the standard deviation so it's a little bit uh, more uh, compact, right? The advantage here is that if I'm doing multiple distributions, think back to my previous video when we were doing the slalom versus the downhill, I'm taking a slalom distribution, which might look like this red one, and I'm taking the downhill distribution, which might make, which might look like this green one, and I'm rescaling both of them so they look the same. When I find z-scores, I'm rescaling them so that the distribution looks the same. And when I do that, I can make powerful comparisons between distributions. That's all I've got for this video. Um, in our next video, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to introduce the idea of a normal model and uh, how we can uh, understand looking at a z score just how unusual it is. All right, so that's what's coming up. Thank you for uh, watching this today, and I hope you guys have a good one. Bye.